Grandma, can I have the chocolate chips? This secret recipe moment made possible by Emory Heart and Vascular Center. When Grandma needed heart care, she came to Emory. The difference? Emory Healthcare performs more heart procedures annually than anyone else in Georgia, which means better outcomes for our patients. And we offer advanced and personalized treatments developed by our top specialists that others don't. Like Grandma knows, where you start your heart care matters. Smart Cookie. EmoryHealthcare.org slash Smart Cookie. What if you could have a career where the opportunities are as vast as our nation, where it's not about mission statements, but a shared mission? At U.S. Customs and Border Protection, we go beyond to protect more than borders. From ship to shore, air to ground, cities to local communities, CBP agents and officers are keeping people safe. Join U.S. Customs and Border Protection and go beyond for something far greater than yourself. Learn more at cbp.gov careers. Hey everyone and welcome back to Comedy Album Book Club. We're having another comedy pizza party with our friends from Big Chick Energy. Uh, Big Chick Energy are a Toronto-based sketch comedy troupe consisting of friends of the podcast Alicia Carrick and Emily Milling, as well as Julia Jones, Joanne Decorda, and Sam Sexton. They joined me uh, via Zoom uh, to chat about Ali Wong's special, Baby Cobra. Uh, Ali Wong is an American-based comedian born in 1982, a San Francisco native who started her career in 2005. Her style is inspired by Chris Rock and would often touch on her experiences living in the city and uh, as a young Asian woman with an honest lens of lived experience. Uh, Ali's resume is nothing if not impressive. Uh, While Baby Cobra was her breakout comedy special on Netflix, It was followed up with a second special, Hard Knock Wife, and her film, Always Be My Maybe, produced with her friend Randall Park. But many aren't aware of her prolific career. In addition to the previously mentioned work, she has worked as a writer and story editor for Fresh Off the Boat, and holds 21 performance credits, has made multiple appearances as herself on Chelsea Lately, Hey Girl, and Best Week Ever, and not to mention being named one of 2011's 10 Comedians to Watch by Variety magazine. Baby Cobra was released in 2016 on Netflix and clocks in at about a tight 60 minutes. The entire special is just packed with energy and bravado that is inspiring to watch. Unfortunately, due to Netflix's not entirely transparent policies around ratings and viewer counts, It's a bit hard to tell you exactly how many people watched Baby Cobra, uh, but it was a critical smash uh, with 100% critic rating on Rotten Tomatoes and an 81% audience score. Further, her continued success illustrates the special really was truly special. Last year, she released her book, Dear Girls, Intimate Tales, Untold Secrets, and Advice for Living Your Best Life. She's called it a life guide for her two young daughters when they've got a little bit older. So grab a slice, sit back, and have fun while we talk about Ali Wong's Baby Cobra. So I want to welcome everybody to Comedy Album Book Club. Uh, this this episode, I am joined by Joanne, Alicia, Emily, Julia, and Sam from Big Chick Energy. Uh, yeah. Thank you for joining us today. Woo. Thank you for having us. So uh, yeah, we just listened. Uh, we just watched uh, Baby Cobra uh, by Ali Wong, uh, which is her first of two comedy specials that she has done uh so yeah so you we when we were talking about all of you coming on the show we had a few ideas bounce around like 30 rock and a couple of other things what um what made this one uh this special and ali wong sort of rise to the top and be what what you selected 
I personally love it just because of her persona on stage. She's just no holds barred. She's crass and she does not apologize, which I really appreciate. (laughs) And I do feel like I always seek out comedians who are women or identify as women and who are women of color, just because that's a voice I feel like don't hear enough of. And I really appreciate the special because it just hits so hard and it's just such excellent writing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say that it's a really good point about kind of like her stage presence and her charisma because a lot of the jokes, like some of them are pretty out there, like they're pretty crass (laughs) and like coming from somebody else, I would be like, oh, but coming from her, you're like, oh, she's just so likable. Mm -hmm. Um, And it just goes to show like how important that is um, in comedy. Mm -hmm. I watched this special before I got into comedy, really, and I was, like, the first one where I was, like, hey, this is, like, really, like, actually relatable to where I was in my life, too. Like, we were around, around the same age going, I wasn't, I didn't have a child or anything, but, like, just the things that she was saying about, like, being over your 20s and, like, getting into, like, adult stuff, and I was, like, that's funny. And, like, the stuff about third world moms hoarding was, like, I was, like, yes. That is my life. Like, that for sure is my life. So, yeah. And I was watching uh, Fresh Off the Boat at the time, too. And it was, mm-hmm. like, so funny. And I was, like, this is awesome, obviously. Because I was just, like, I don't know. Like, growing up, I, I didn't really think too much about representation. But then when I saw it, I was, like, this is cool. I like it. <laughs> so, yeah. That was one of my favorite uh, specials. I just, uh, I hadn't seen the special until just now when we watched it, um, but I've watched her movie um, Always Be My Maybe like five billion times. Um, yeah. It's just the sweetest rom-com ever, and I love a good rom-com, and it's so, um, it's so very much like the type of female personality and character that I want to see more of, uh, and uh, she's hilarious in the first place. Um, but also her her work on Tuca and Birdie, um, and I didn't know until just now that she wrote on Fresh Off the Boat, and that yep. is also a hilarious show. So um, so being a little bit of a noob to Ali Wong, except for maybe her movie that I've watched too many times, um, <laughs> um, I really found that whole that whole set so refreshing and relatable on on so many levels. Yeah, uh, it, it's she's very funny she's a funny person <laughs> i second that she's a very funny person um so that was that was, that was my first time watching anything ali oh. long like and um, i there's been a lot of comedy on netflix as we all know it's kind of like our big source for a lot of it yeah. um I, there's a lot of people that have uh, numerous stand-ups as well or at, like, at least um specials i guess which is great and I, I saw Ali Wong floating around on there, but I just, I, there's just a lot of content you got to get through. Yeah. And, and I feel like I've also just like taken a backseat to watching a ton of like comedy on Netflix specifically, but like, this was such a breath of fresh air to watch, mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. like taking such a long break from watching Netflix comedies and just, I mean, pandemic related mm-hmm. domestic sort of, um, new husband wife scenario that i'm in and also like like all the sex stuff it's so real <laughs> yeah <laughs> it really is and uh, i just found that to be so like light but also very real and mm-hmm. still there's like there's a certain element of like the heaviness to it too and the seriousness of just like how important it is that like she is out there saying these words and it's, it's so nice to watch and yeah. just fun she's fun on stage yeah awesome delightful now um so i know a few of you this was your first exposure um is this was this ever uh everybody's well and emily your first exposure was uh always be my maybe um uh, but was this everybody else's first entry into ali wong and her comedy no Ooh. i watched hard 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 knock wife is that it the, the mm-hmm. second special um, when that came out, and I thought it was really funny, and then I also saw the movie, um, and then, yeah, this is her first special, which I, so I kind of went backwards, but, um, yeah. I think I watched Fresh Off the Boat first, and then I was like, oh, she's also doing this thing, and I was like, okay, 
And I think Netflix was new to me at the time too. So I was like, oh, let's see what's on here. <laughs> mm -hmm. I gotta watch some more of her stuff. She's great. It's interesting. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say that it's interesting how she's pregnant in both specials. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I read somewhere that, like, I don't know if she actually did it on purpose, but it made it sound like she did it on purpose, like, where she said she wanted to, um, like if if she, if doing the first special she um, it kind of like blew up her career she wanted to associate that success with her child because oh. a lot of female comedians after they have kids they just kind of disappear yeah so she didn't she didn't want it to be the same for her mm -hmm. I saw her live when she came to Toronto for just for laughs yeah a couple years ago. And she was pregnant, and I guess that was around the same time when she was also well, filming? She recorded it at the Winter Garden. Okay. So I, I was there for the second night um, of the show. Uh, like, I first saw her on, on at midnight, and I was like, oh, she's hilarious. Because mm -hmm. even then, in this, like, really confined, she dominated that panel mm -hmm. because she's just, like, her voice is so distinct and so... She just, she's like, yeah, no, I'm not going to let a bunch of Chris Hardwick's friends tell me what to say on this stage. I'm, this is my, sh my platform. You, you guys just fucking roll with it. Uh, so that's when I first saw her, but then I saw the special and we, uh, at GFL 42, like two years ago, three years mm -hmm. ago. Uh, yeah. So she, I, there, she was performing two nights. First night was at the winter garden and it was recording. Then the second night they were like saying they might do some pickups at, the, uh, the so is, is the Sony Center Sony. at the time. Yeah, that's where I thought. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it is it was it, I at first too. I thought, oh, this, is this a bit because her first special, mm -hmm. she was pregnant, and it didn't really sort of she didn't tap into it in quite the same way. Mm -hmm. And the second special, uh, so it's like, oh, it's just, is she just doing a thing now? But then it's like, no, she's actually pregnant. Um, so yeah, I also thought it was fake. <laughs> I was like, yeah. is she going to say something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah and it, it was interesting the dynamic too like the there's a lot of material she cut, that's cut from the, the the hard knock wife special that was local obviously they're not going to have the toronto material in there but also about the audience because there is is a a very diverse audience that this this audience was not like the, watching the sh shots of this, the audience in this special, it's like, that's a really white San Francisco crowd, which, mm. which was like, it was interesting because like that kind of sort of, I find her material is very accessible, mainly because it touches on so many different vectors of, of funny. Mm. Um, and like, you know, she, she's got, for me, it's like the, like, it, it's like she can touch every group, like, for like middle class white people like me, it's like the hippie shit. It's like she's like going on hikes and all this this crap, and I'm like feel like I'm a white person pretending to be Asian, and it's just like you know the the like oh she does the same things as me like that's the this this super middle class crap that that we do, so it's like oh there's a point of reference for everybody, but then she's got like I fuck skater dudes and stuff, so like wait that's not a point of reference for everyone <laughs> what. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but how do, do you what do you all find sort of like is there a point that you really find resonates with you like i know joanne you talked about how there's you were going through a lot of similar experiences like what about her material really um you feel lines up there were so skater much boys <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. There was so much. Like I already mentioned, like the mom thing, like just keeping things. Um, just as her description of like Asian men, I guess. Like I don't relate because <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I I don't relate as much because I was joking on the chat that like I'm not attracted to Asian men probably because every time I met an Asian person, they were like my family as a child. <laughs> so I've just always been like, no, cannot be attracted to you. <laughs> my cousin so we'll just keep a distance but just like that and I appreciated though that she was like standing up for Asian men too I feel like they don't get enough credit for like being like cool and sexy and stuff I guess yeah um yeah so that yeah I don't know just and like 
when she was talking about like not being young anymore, I guess I'm like your body changing. I was like, yes, you might not see it, but it, I feel it. I feel the change. <laughs> And the rest of you, where where do you? I mean, I I did say the skater boy thing, but um, in <laughs> truth, the um, I I really really appreciated once you started talking about miscarriages because it is totally true. And I I was looking at my Facebook memories today, and it was like twelve years ago now that I had an ectopic pregnancy, which resulted in a ridiculous amount of surgery. Um, but it's like um, it was shitty at the time, but it's not something I haven't been able to get over and I think it is really important for more people to talk about mm -hmm. having miscarriages and that it is like a really big part of life I know uh, she's right like I know a bunch of people who've had them but we never talk about it and we never talk about it in like a comedy way um obviously <laughs> well for obvious reasons like it's a very devastating process but I really really appreciated that she brought up her mis miscarriage and um she didn't sweep it under the rug but she mm. she called it out and and said like we must talk more about it but also oh my god the relief that comes along with it you know um it's it's different for everybody right but uh that, i think that really stuck out to me in the whole grand scheme of the whole thing that and the skater boys mm. and it was a, it actually it was an Asian boyfriend, a Chinese boyfriend, that uh, provided me with such a seed that would totally blast through my plan B. So, like, I'm like, I really <laughs> relate to Ali Wong. Yeah. <laughs> and what, was he like a dolphin? He was like a dolphin. I was like fucking a dolphin. <laughs> he was really into Silicon. butt stuff, too. Like, I don't know. Is it, you know, like, I'll, like, everything she said, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I get that. Uh huh. Yeah, 20s, my 20s, yeah. Mm. That's basically it. <laughs> the universal themes, Matt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But stuff. Yeah. But <laughs> she's able to make it so funny and yeah. just like everyone's thinking it too. Like especially around like the butt stuff part. And you know, there's a lot of women in the audience that are probably feeling like, oh, I might actually relate. But like, yeah, you can relate. Yeah, you tried something new. And she talks about it with such strength and confidence that you're just like, Yeah, Ali Wong, like you're mm -hmm. speaking my language and thank you. It's good. not weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, and one of the things that I, I really love about her in every, every time that I've seen her in every performance or writing job that I've seen her work on is there's a shamelessness to her material. Um, and I mean, a lot of people use shameless as a bad thing, but I'm thinking being, shameless is a good thing because it's like you're, you're not like uh, scared or afraid of your history and it's, it's an ownership. And I, I find that in a lot of her material, like the, uh, like how she addresses her sexuality in her twenties and, and even in it, like with the sleeping with the homeless people jokes that she did, it would have been so easy for her to punch down, but she did. not And, and it was, it was like, she aimed it at herself in a self deprecating way that didn't make, like, it was like, the guy was hot. That's why she slept with him. It's like, <laughs> it's urban outfitters fault. It's not his fault. Uh, that, but yeah, and like, and even like the tag, like that the the when she goes like, she tags it with uh, twice, that uh, like she slept with a homeless guy, and it's just sort of like, oh god, so, yeah. I mean, do you find that that shameless, like, just basically being willing to own your experience is useful in comedy? Yes, I think my favorite part of Ali Wong is that she's confident with her storytelling and her persona but she also doesn't like dumb herself down i do feel like that's a little bit of a thing with female comedians who are just like yeah i just like wandered in the bathroom and then i shit myself whatever i don't know that's a terrible example <laughs> but you know she's just like this is my plan this is what i'm doing and here's why like she just lays it all out there these aren't happenstances some of the things she's talking about she's like I locked his ass down for this reason. I made his lunch every day for this reason. I love how calculated she is yeah. in her storytelling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there's so many female comics that are like so self-deprecating. Like, um, what's her name? I can't think of her right now. Um, but um, that's fine and it's funny, but like sometimes it gets old, right? And yeah. she's not like that at all, which is like, quite refreshing. 
be hard to watch when someone's just kind of punching themselves down. Yeah. And just like, oh man, how much is left? Yeah. <laughs> I, I have another friend who, um, she's not in the comedy world, but she went out and that is that she saw a woman comic who was doing that and she's like, I just don't want to come out. She's that turned her off of comedy entirely because of that sort of that self deprecating voice that that so many people have to lean on and particularly a lot of women comics have been forced to lean uh, into that for a long time Mm -hmm. yes amy schumer amy yes Yes. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just own it um, and, and throw the, the shoulders other, back <laughs> the other thing that I would say that is nice is she touches on um, like even some kind of like political topics or um, like for instance when she's talking about the um, you know how she has to go to like when her husband um, accompanies her to the doctor's appointments and it's like oh my yeah. gosh like he's such a good husband and father and like how yeah, men don't have to do a lot to be seen as, like, you know, amazing compared to women who, you know, may, may make some small parenting mistakes and it's like, you're the worst mom. Yeah. Um, but the way she, yeah, the way she talks about it is just, I don't know, it's just very kind of, like, matter of fact and approachable. Like, it's not, you're not kind of like, oh, this is, like it's enjoyable to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She she really heightens it I think with the whole like I am here to be a housewife. You know, like in one moment she's like this is this is going to be the greatest thing ever and then the second moment she's like um she's really undercut like she's she's just calling it out and parodying the whole idea of being a um a stay-at-home mom because she's clearly not obviously she no. has a very like ambitious career path that she's mm-hmm. gone through already. Uh but I think she like she's also giving people permission to be like, yeah, no, I, I don't want to just only be ambitious all the time. Like, I, I would like to just lie on the floor for a while, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like, really like that about it, too. Yeah, that everybody you should have a choice to do yeah. what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah uh, I should have a choice to have a, an extremely rich Harvard grad husband with <laughs> $70,000 in debt. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it was beautiful at the end how did he yeah. bamboozle me <laughs> yeah. like, I love how she put the word bamboozled into her set like two three times yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah like one of the things too i love about her material is like it's is it, there's it's de- joke dense on multiple levels like if you were to listen to this it would be a funny album uh because it's joke dense verbally but there's these act outs that she does where she uses her physicality as well, mm-hmm. whereas like the faces that she pulls, or like the point when she like it's like she's a guy and the girl trying to do the butt stuff. And he's like, no, <laughs> and, like reaching yeah. behind or, or lying on the floor with her legs up for the the postcoidal draining as uh, kind of thing. It's it's just like it. She really feels masterfully in control of every element of her set that I, I find. And really the fact impressive. that she's pregnant doing all of these things yes. too. And that she is being like sexual even when she's pregnant. Like she's not this like very virginal pregnant mm-hmm. woman, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like innocent, like super innocent, like how we are trained to think of pregnant people. Yeah. She still and it makes her sexier. Yeah. <laughs> like like in a very tight dress. I know. Yeah. Again, owning it. I think uh, just the stance she has on stage, she just kind of knows how ridiculous she looks with this giant bump and this tight mm-hmm. little dress and just yeah. has this little hip cocked out yeah. on the side, just like, what's up? <laughs> yeah. and she's like funny. bent over like a 90 degree <laughs> majority of the time too. It's great. <laughs> yeah. um, now, she has a really distinct voice. Uh, like, I feel like watching this special and then watching her other roles uh like in bojack horseman um inside amy schumer uh like like all of these different like she was on uh, are you there chelsea uh for for a while um but actually she's also in a show called american housewives uh or housewife as a housewife so she she gets to play one on tv uh <laughs> but that's not a reality show, is it? No, no, no. It's it's a it's a sitcom. It's a pretty by the book sitcom, which is like as like that's a weird choice, but at the same time, it's like, well, she wants her mortgage money, so she mm-hmm. spent seventy thousand dollars getting her her Harvard grad 
husband out of debt. So I, under, I understand doing that. Uh, but I feel like her voice carries through to all of her projects. Um, like, like if you watch Fresh Off the Boat, uh, Constant Woo's Jessica sounds a lot like her. Um, and the, the main character, her character in Always Be I Maybe also sounds a lot like her. How important is it to, do you think, to preserve, like, is, what's the balance that you guys find in preserving your individual voice when doing comedy versus, like, like giving into the, 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 the bit or giving into the, the sort of the, the larger ensemble? Yeah. I think no. you have to pick and choose. Um, I think there's, because, like, when, when you're doing comedy or theater or whatever, for me, the goal is to always entertain. So whatever i'm doing it's like what will make this the most entertaining that being said when you're someone like um ali wong and you're, it's it's just you on stage you need to be yourself and what is your perspective that is unique and i was watching james corden with my mom a couple nights ago and allison brie was one of the guests and she was talking about how apparently Disney was developing a She-Hulk series and they were looking for an Allison Breed type. Mm -hmm. And she said, I didn't know I was a type. I was always auditioning for like Anne Hathaway types and things like that. So to finally be a type, that's like you're in. You fucking wow. made it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's my take on it. So be yourself because there's no one else like you, kid. <laughs> <laughs> But it's true. And then like, we're obviously working in a group. It's just finding a nice balance between all of it, right? But you mm. wanting everyone to be, and in the words of um, Emily Richardson, <laughs> be your best self of whatever that comedy um, brand or whatever it is, whatever your brand of comedy is. Bring and it I, to the table. I think it helps you be more like authentic and real in whatever you're doing. Like you have to know yourself for it to be believable and like relatable to people. Mm -hmm. So like having, even if you're playing a character, there's got to be something that like is resonating in you that makes it authentic and believable as a character. Yeah. I mean, if you're just faking it all the time, I mean, like before, before we all kind of started working together, um, like a year and a half ago, it was really hard for me to, to put on any sort of like actual Emily into anything. And I was like, I must put on fake Emily all the time because uh, people aren't gonna like the real Emily. And, um, and so I think having examples like Ali, Ali Wong, um, just being themselves is, is incredibly helpful um, to letting other people be themselves as well. Um, mm -hmm. Because like you can't, you can't really do that until you like spend time working on this process, right? And working on this craft um, and understanding what your voice is because it's uh, like, you can't, it doesn't just like happen unless you're like constantly doing it. So it's, it, yeah, that's a roundabout way of saying what I said earlier, which was just that she makes it easy to be yourself yeah. when, you're, when you're looking for role models. Mm -hmm. I think in terms of a group, you've, it, when you're working with a group, it is important to find the right personalities to, to surround yourself with because they will bring out the best aspects of you or help you find aspects of your personality that will enhance the group. Like, I think we all work really, really well together because we're all generally nice people, but we all have our own little quirks and we kind of just build off on that. And I do find, I, am, I do act slightly different when I'm with other people or in certain groups because that's the role I feel like I need to be. But when I'm with these guys, I'm like, oh, I can be insane. This is excellent. <laughs> Yeah, like we totally removed any reason to be embarrassed about anything. I feel like we've we've talked about poop so much at this point that it, <laughs> there's nothing else. We have else. to do do this. But that that, uh, that one sketch from your show, the the warrior sketch, I was like, whoa! <laughs> it was like it was just like it was hilarious, and yeah. it was just but it, it was kind of Ali Wong y in that it was just. It just, it was there. And it was just like, stop being dicks about this. Like, just get your head on straight. It's just a little blood. Like, it, it, it was just so it was funny. It's about period blood. You have to say yeah. it's about period blood. It was blood. about Julia period wrote blood. That. Yeah. It's, so, it's such a funny, such a well-written sketch. And it was so yeah. fun to play with that sketch and, like, find little character nuances in the whole thing. It was really great. <laughs> Carl. 
Yeah. And uh, one of the things I find um, really interesting about Ali Wong's uh, th special, this one in particular, I mean, she goes super dark in so many levels. I mean, about race and gender and the and power dynamics, mm -hmm. like these really heavy topics, but she keeps it light at the same time. Like she talks about poop a lot, for example, and various permutations, but like the, the lifting the leg for the soft serve and she never once calls it shit. Like she's yeah, like doo doo, doo poop. And it's just like that keeps it at it. Like by not saying that word, it changes how the entire the topic is addressed because it keeps it like it, at this level in a way that I find really interesting. And like, how do you like balance, like what do you do to balance that, that darkness to light, that funny to, to serious to get that core of like really interesting meat out while keeping it sort of fun and light? Well, I am naturally an awkward person, I've been told. <laughs> so when things get a little serious, I tend to do like weird, I don't know, I even introduce myself weirdly. Like, so sometimes it is like a coping mechanism not to like get too dark. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it is what it is. I would think like with the doo-doo, um, like if it, I don't know, like I don't, I think I probably swear more in my real life than I do in like comedy related things. Like I'm a big, as you know, uh, Matt, like a Gaffigan fan and with the doo-doo mm -hmm. jokes and like so many different permutations of the doo-doo joke, it reminds me of like a Jim Gaffigan horse joke or yeah. that, you know, and, um, but yeah, like calling it doo-doo as opposed to shit. Like if it doesn't need to be there, like we don't have to go crass in like terms of vulgar language, then you appeal, I don't know, to to a broader audience it's almost like a a g or pg rated uh sex talk among you know the most vulgar speaking people it just doesn't <laughs> it's a, it's a nicer way to go about it sometimes and it's a little lighter and it makes it less of a you know taboo subject yeah mm. yeah it makes it less uncomfortable or like crass yeah. kind of like a little cutesy bit yeah it takes a power away from the crap <laughs> and you can just do whatever you want with it. It just makes it so silly and like accessible exactly. to everybody. Yeah. Which um kind what of, what I originally thought of when you asked your question, Matt, was uh my writing instructor uh from Second City named Joel Buxton. Um he met he talked about how I think it was an onion article where they were trying to address all the um, in New York City, how everyone's being stopped in frisks, like that mm -hmm. new policy from the New York police. So they called it Stop and Kiss. And like, <laughs> they just changed the name, but everybody knew what this article was talking about. So you just like kind of put it in a different framework. It just kind of lets you look at it a certain way and makes people not afraid to talk about it. Yeah. Um, so I think that's also what she did was just like, like when she was talking about her miscarriage, like, yes, this is this awful thing, but in my mom's world it's like it's losing a pair of shoes her words exactly yeah. so yeah there you go yeah recontextualizing things so that you can understand it from a totally different point of view and uh, yeah. so much of writing is about point of view so um so uh, i think it's really fascinating to hear hers and apply it to my own writing the end of that statement <laughs> Period. Okay. <laughs> Period. Um, now, she she said she and I can. Uh, it, it's interesting. She said she was inspired and kind of mentored by Chris Rock, and her dynamics on stage. I can, it doesn't. She doesn't sound like Chris Rock, but there's a, Chris Rock owns the stage when he's on it. He like just prowls that stage, like a person who knows this is my house you can come in and I'm going to just show you a good time. And I feel that she's very much the same way in that regard. And I think that it's just that, that again, shamelessness and ownership of the comedic voice. Um, are there any comedians that you can think of that she kind of reminds you of, or you, you feel like they have sim not necessarily similarities, but they kind of resonate uh, with, with her material? 
Only because you mentioned how she uses the stage. I think of Mike Birbiglia and he's less stand up and more storytelling, but when it's so funny because he's just kind of like a softer spoken guy and he's not so physical, but when he speaks, you're just so immersed in the story he's telling, you forget about all the empty space around him. Yeah. Like it's really impressive. So I definitely that use of space, but also the way he uses his voice because that's just storytelling, but I love the way that Ali Wong uses her voice because, yeah, she does the yelling, like, I need to lock him down, but she also will get really close to the mic and say, this is how you do it. Listen to me. I'm a genius. <laughs> like, just how she goes up and down. It's yeah. so effective. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a, she's, she's got everybody sort of wrapped around her finger, and you can see the control in her eyes, too, and just yeah. her pacing as she goes across, and she's like, and now I'm coming in. And it's just a, it's a very in control, like powerful stance that she takes. Um, I kind of like Chappelle in a way will do that too. You know, mm -hmm. he's just like, you're all waiting for what I'm going to say. And yeah. it, trust me, it's going to be good. <laughs> well worth it. Like uh, there's a couple of comedians that I've, I've, I think like when I watch her material, it kind of reminds me in a way of like a progression of their material and that's Phyllis Diller and Joan Rivers and how, especially in how she speaks about her husband um, in that like, oh, he's my delightful goof kind of, kind of way that she locked down and she's, she's got it. And actually in her, and Joanne, you'd probably remember that in the second show, she had him selling merch. Yeah. So I, I actually bought a poster yeah, from him. Yeah. He, he, he made, so I'm like, I've met Ali Wong's husband. Well, That's she did that on me. purpose. She's like, go meet him and buy the merchandise. Yeah, yeah. That, that was, she used it as a selling factor, too. And it was like, <laughs> that is so multi-layered and clever. Uh, but yeah, like, you know, when Phyllis Diller would talk about Fang or when Joan Rivers would talk about Edgar, it was loving, but also, oh, this guy's just such a schmo. Like, just, just such a, such a dummy that I got, like, I incepted him, and he's doing exactly what was, I'm the boss, and, it, and it's just, like, I, I feel it kind of carries that forward into a, a more modern context, and mm. I, that's, that's something I'll, because I, you know, I, I have podcasts talking about comedy history, so it's, like, history where there's, like, there's a lineage there that I find really delightful. Mm. What I, what I liked about her talking about her husband, though, is when she, like, turned around on herself that she was a sucker for paying $70,000, so it kind yeah. of put them on evil, even ground, because, like, she's sort of, like, berating him, like she says, like, in her special, like, but he's in on the joke, like, too, so it's not like she's being, like, mean to him, yeah. <laughs> like, which I thought was a clever way to, like, bring it back and, like, put, like, you know, equal it out again. Yeah. Learning uh, lessons. Yeah. It's like the new comedy of the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I read that he likes her now to run jokes by him that involve him <laughs> yeah uh, he, there. that's yeah, fair yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I, and I, since I started doing stand up I will run my my bits by Heather and she's like you don't mention my name and I'm like look I'm not I'm just like mentioning that you know because it's weird to say my wife I'm not like Borat or something I'm just like, <laughs> do you want me to make up a fake name like my my wife Exa Alexandra I don't know like <laughs> so, so yeah but it's, it's 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 one of those funny things where you have to t like your partner is such a part of your your life and experience you need the they have to be a part of them if you're ignoring that you're you're ignoring comedy gold um but at the same time, you don't want to, like, make them feel weird. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't want to make them feel uncomfortable. And, and, and even when she's, like, being, like, poking at him, there's still a lot of poking back at herself. It's, it, it never feels mean-spirited or, or unequal in, in how mm -hmm. she's distributing it. She speaks about it, like, she, like I mean, the, the whole top of the bit is, this mm -hmm. was my whole plan. And everything that I've done up until this point has been by my accord. So, like, you know, she might be, like, punching down, like, a little bit, but it is balanced still. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I just, I love the, the, the lack of fucks she has. Mm -hmm. like, like, just, like, the stuff, like, when she's talking about, like, again, you know, on so many things, like, like, when she calls out the, the co-worker for 
giving her crap about being late and it's like well i've heard you shit <laughs> or or when she talks about like um the moistness and stuff mm -hmm. where it's just like oh boy <laughs> But I love that too because she was, and then, and then to smell your fingers to be like, gotta make sure everything's okay. But it's just like such a thing that, you know, it's a weird thing to see someone do for sure. But you're also yeah, like, in no, a like, anyway. <laughs> I know the last time I checked for a foul smell in a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it makes me not so scared to do that bathroom stall sketch we talked about. Remember that? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we, we talked at great lengths about our worst yes. bathroom stories. Mm -hmm. yeah and I'm sure Very we will real. again like the time I got trapped in a bathroom and the boss that I really hated was there and like talking to him I was like sobbing <laughs> in the oh. corner of this bathroom oh. and she's like she's talking to this other woman I don't know for like 45 minutes or something and I'm stuck there for 45 <laughs> minutes listening to her there. talk and I'm still there and the, the other woman leaves and my boss gets into the stall next to me takes a big hairy fucking shit and then leaves it doesn't even wash your hands. And like, this is before COVID, okay? Like she didn't wash her motherfucking hands. Mm. Bathroom stories. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned, BCE, got a lot of shit on the way. Yeah. Do do. Do do. Do you do. Do you all have like a favorite bit from the special? Like sort of one that stands out that's like, oh, that's just genius. There are times where I'll like just jokingly try to like reach for Wes's butthole, like not even doing sex. <laughs> just general, like he could just be doing the dishes and I'll just like go in for a little and he just goes, ah! <laughs> And so that reaction from her, I'm just like, yes, right? Like, yeah, why do they do it so high when we try to touch their buttholes? It's bizarre. <laughs> I know, doesn't see it coming. <laughs> I like, I always go back to the, the mom wanting to hold on to the calculator in, instructions mm. because I remember those calculators and they were like torture for me and I never really understood why I was like graphing things and the problems they would give me. So like that worked for me. The fact that she was like fighting with her mom to like hold on to them and like just the stuff that I have found in my own house that I cannot like get rid of because it's so like embedded in me that I might need these things one day. Like yeah. that, I think, because it was so early on in the show, too, and when I first saw it, I was like, yes, like, she gets me, I get this. Yeah. That was my favorite bit. Yeah, that really resonated with me, too, and I, I mean, my mother is not from a third, third world country, but she hoards things, like, anything, um, <laughs> and so, yeah, I can actually picture my high school calculator in this cupboard in my parents' house with, like, tons of other shit packed in there um, from my whole childhood that it's still there and she will not get rid of. Um, and I fight every day to not be like that. Yeah. <laughs> purge, I, purge. Yeah. Marie Kondo I, that uh, shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. trying. Which is a thing I noticed right off the bat is that because she was referencing her Kindle, she referenced Marie Kondo's book, Tidying Up, before any of us mm -hmm. up north knew what the hell that was. Yes. <laughs> oh, so nice. ahead of the curve and I'm like, yeah. Netflix, just full circle. <laughs> yes. full circle Netflix. It's a cult. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, are there any comedians that you think, like, she has a very powerful energy and very, that, that ownership of material? Um, like, there's a couple of. It's funny, Sammy, you mentioned Amy Schumer because I kind of feel like there is a similarity there, but Amy Schumer is much hackier in how she does it. I mean, I, there are Amy Schumer bits I enjoy. Um, and like putting aside the allegations of joke theft and everything, but I, I find she does a similar kind of material, but it's just not as refined, um, even to the point where she did her special while pregnant. And I was like, "You're ripping off Ali Wong right yeah. now. <laughs> you're you're just totally stealing her, stealing that." Uh, but then on the other end of the spectrum, there's Amy Heller or Emily Heller, excuse me, Emily Heller, who I find super freaking hilarious again because of the no fuck attitude of like this is my me just suck it up and buckle up because i'm gonna be funny so is there anybody that stands out in any of your mm -hmm. minds like sketch or stand up like any kind of comedian or comedic performer that that you, you kind of feel has that similar kind of vibe yeah i think chelsea peretti like jumps to mind immediately mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. 
like all of the writing that she's done on sitcoms, but then also her specials and then her, her podcast, her super weird podcast where she has people call her on Skype and then she kind of yells at them for a while. <laughs> Unsolicited advice. I don't know. It's, I don't know if it's still going, but she used to do this like ages ago, but um, like she, even like her, uh, her character in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I feel like is so similar to the, the special that she put out um, however many years ago. Um, where it is just like, it, you must accept who I am and I don't care if you don't, the end. It's not, it's not necessarily like, I don't give a fuck because like they do, they do care. They, they really do care. Um, but what they care about is that they are true to themselves. I think, yeah. I think there's a, there's a really clear distinction that you have to make there that, um, like I, I could say all the time, like, I don't give a fuck, but I have learned in therapy that that's a coping mechanism and I do give a fuck. But I, what, I, what I know I care about and what I think I resonate with, with these women um, is that they, they don't care whether other people accept them for who they are or not because they know that they accept themselves. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel about like Mindy Kaling too. Like mm -hmm. she, I find her and Ali Wong are sort of similar, just that they're really, both really opinionated, have like similar, like, I, I think upbringings, I'm not really sure, but like just the way, cause they're, they are both strong and they like have a big ego, but it's like in a funny way where they also like blurt out their insecurities and they're like mm -hmm. not afraid to say it, which I love about them because I, it just makes it, um, I, I don't know, like just like funny. Like I, I know that I'm my own hero, but also I have all these flaws, but that's what makes me like unique and cool. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, Joanne, I love that you say you're your own hero, and it just makes me think of the video we made of you singing to yourself. <laughs> I'm Joanne! I, love Joanne. <laughs> I want everyone to see it. Oh, it's yeah. the best video I think I've ever helped anyone make ever in my life. <laughs> oh, you gotta, I gotta link to that. Every birthday, I will <laughs> yeah, watch that. I, yes. I took a survey the other day about, like, my personality, and it, like, told me all these things, and when I feel, like, really good, it's, like, when I, like, know my personality and how I perceive myself all align. But I took this like quiz and it told me that I was like the best ever and I was like damn straight I am. <laughs> oh yeah, yes. reinforcement. Yes. <laughs> but very true. She, yeah. So I feel like Ali Wong and Mindy, they have this like that, like it comes together and you can feel it. It's like magical. Like, and she's on. not on it like she, to that point, like she she's on an even ground with her audience you know it's not like I'm up here you're down there like we're like status is straight up we're people and I'm just happen to have a microphone I'm gonna tell you the nitty-gritty about my butt his butt everyone's butt and doo doo. you know and you're just like yeah you're real you really get it <laughs> uh any any other comedians that you guys can oh think God. of or in terms of personality and also in their set talking about what it's like to be an older woman would be Leslie Jones. I really enjoyed mm. her recent special. Um, and just in everything she does, I love her Instagram, especially when the Olympics are on. Yes. And she discovers curling and can't stop talking about the pants. I love it. She was also a guest judge on RuPaul's Drag Race last season. And even though she's a judge she's on the panel and they're filming everything she is still blatantly recording everything with her phone and just like yes <laughs> like she just does not care yeah well, like, i'm uh, excited yeah like what i love <laughs> about her what she could do yeah exactly like with her she's like an older person who like hit it big like she's 45 46 like well, uh, she's 52 older. 52 yeah. okay wow. so so yeah like she was like in her mid 40s when when her career blew up and she'd been slogging away for, for decades. And, and so that she's like enjoying every moment of it, like being able to do panels about like Game of Thrones because she fucking loves Game of Thrones. So she's gonna talk to Seth Meyers about Game of Thrones on, on his show. Cool. And yeah, so I, I, yeah, that, that I love that about her too. Free reign at that point. Like she wore a cool. knee brace in her special. Like. <laughs> Like, like, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany Haddish is very much like that too in her book. Yeah. Mm. I haven't watched any of her specials, but I've read her book and seen her movies because she yeah. makes me laugh. 
and so I will watch them for infinity. But she doesn't, she's, yeah. she's also very much a, like, I am who I am and accept it and move on. Yeah. Because <laughs> oh, I'm she, having a great time. <laughs> she talks about, yeah. uh, it was, I'm trying to, she, talk, she had this one performance where it just totally bombed like yeah. for whatever reason and she just like she, she doesn't pretend it didn't happen and in that moment she's just like she just owned it and enjoyed it and stuff so yeah it's like, like she has that that like uh, this is my experience mm -hmm. it just makes it adds to the flavor of life and that's why I find, like all of these people we're talking about i find it, that that seems to be like a recurring theme is like just embrace it all because it mm -hmm. all it's all worth sort of celebrating in a different mm -hmm. way Mm -hmm. Are there any comedians, like female comedians or women identifying comedians that aren't like that? I think they're... One comedian, uh, so, yeah. who? I, thought was, uh, was it Beth Stelling or Elizabeth Stelling? Beth I'm Stelling. Really, yeah, I like her so much. Like, she's not the biggest personality on stage, yeah. but she's very down to earth. She talks about her experiences and how yeah. ridiculous they are, but she doesn't beat herself down like a lot of other female comedians yes. that we've talked about too i feel like she's a gem she's yeah. one of my favorites well check out the comedy on book club episode where we first discussed simply the best and then the follow-up episode where i interview her <gasps> via telephone Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. on it uh, yeah lucky lucky devil yeah i mean i, I kind of think like there's a couple of comedians and i don't want to name names that i've seen because like, they're they're smaller profile and stuff um and i don't want to be like throwing shade at people mm. who mm. i like but like where i've seen them in real life or seen them online where it's like there's very it's self-deprecatory without the uplifting component mm -hmm. um and i mean like if we you know we, we, um every time i go to talk about this goddamn special i forget the name nanette in the net Th that that's sort of the gist of it of like oh we have to tear ourselves down to make ourselves seem funny and i mean i think you see that more in like insult comedy or like um there's uh, like the the hannah gadsby uh, Han Han well no no I, you know, yes hannah gadsby for nanette but um that sort of like roast world where it's sort of like there's a negativity that just runs through the comedians so uh whitney cumming Elena Glazier too. Yeah, like they're both people that I, I enjoy, but I, it's like I like them now more once they got past that. But when their earlier stuff, there was that negativity there that I think they're still finding that balance. Um, so yeah, I think it's a phase that a lot of. I mean, that I think comes with all age you know, too, and like getting going through experiences, yeah. maturing and stuff. Yeah, like uh, I mean every comedian has to figure out their voice and i think for the mm -hmm. i mean you chase the laugh especially in stand up where there's literally it's like you and mike in the audience so there's not that buffer there so you have to like what's the what's what's the easy laugh and it's that struggle between you know endearing yourself and what's going to make people laugh oh if you tear yourself down because that makes them feel that oh you don't take yourself too seriously then i'm going to like you kind of thing mm -hmm. and i think there's a culturally I think there's a there's and I mean I don't you could all speak to this better than I could, but there's that sort of cultural pressure for for women and people who identify as women to like not step up and, and like not not to put themselves like because it's like the stereotype of bossy mm -hmm. like she talk like talk about you can't say bossy uh, or or all this stuff like it, it, and that's discussed in lean in what she discusses in there so yeah i think it all sort of plays through that uh, i don't know <laughs> that's, that's my rumination sure, just saying for sure yeah and and like as the comedian and if that's the way you're doing comedy or going through that phase it, it like must get tiring yeah. to think of other negative stuff and then you would attract that also as your audience you know and like mm -hmm. it the this i don't know if it's a shift but it, the sort of like unwavering confidence like yo i'm telling you my story this is what's up people flock to that i find it's just just true honesty and and storytelling and people can relate to or want to be at least in the presence of maybe a little more positivity and i think mm -hmm. ali wong totally encapsulates all of that and there's a ton of comedians like her and it's just like that's so nice like you want to be in a space that is welcoming 
Mm-hmm. I think, you know, like uh, as a society, we're also kind of evolving in the type of media that we consume and the type of advertising we consume too, right? Like there was a time where you could say like, buy this sugar because it is good for growing children and babies. And like, that is no longer the case. People aren't stupid, dumb, dumb idiots. Like we're well informed about a lot of things. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Alicia, to your point about people are flocking to that type of energy. I think it is not just the positivity, but it's the honesty and the authenticity yeah. of what people are bringing to the table now. Cause like, if you're just, so like I had a really shitty experience with Jim Jeremush. No, Jim Jeffries, not Jim Jeremush, the <laughs> filmmaker, Jim Jeffries, Jeff Jeffries, yep. which whatever he's a fucking shithead um i watched his (laughs) special and this is why i don't watch a lot of comedy specials i watched it and i was like this is a fucking sexist piece of garbage shit and i tweeted that and i tagged him because i was like a half a bottle of wine in and i was like fuck you and then he sent his goddamn motherfucking minions on me and like i woke up the next day to a shitstorm on twitter of a bunch of men yelling at me telling me to get back in the kitchen you fat ugly cunt whore (gasps) whoa what? yeah wow controls. Yeah. i'm like well okay yeah. so you have proven my point but yeah whatever yeah yeah uh, still just like wow way to go out of your way <laughs> so seriously well. though i just watched them the taylor swift um miss americana on Netflix. yeah and it was so good and it's kind of like her story of like being that like quiet like taught to be polite girl to like learning educating herself and then like I'm learning like patriarchy and starting like learning that it's okay to stand up for yourself and don't apologize and and I think that is so great and that's what I meant by like you know you're maturing you're going through these Mm -hmm. experiences and like you also know that you don't want to take it anymore like that's enough like I've had enough of this and like I have my own personality and life this is like not okay that you're doing certain things I feel like Ali Wong her special she sort of joked about that when she was saying like like colonizing the colonizer and like yeah. the patriarchy and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's I think that kind of comedy to me is is refreshing and like because it, it isn't punching down, it's also like showing like the mechanisms of like the patriarchy or like the systems that we're in in a, like a funny mm-hmm. way and a and a way that we can understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Educational. Yeah. As it's well edu- as funny. <laughs> it truly is. Like I'm learning. Yeah, um, okay, so last question. Uh, I'll sort of work my way around the, the ring, sort of closing thoughts kind of thing. Uh, would, you, would you recommend this special, and do you think it's an important special? So we'll start with you, Joanne, since you're the first in the rotation there. I think it is an amazing special. It's the one comedy special I think that really awoken, awakened like a comedy thing in me. Like seeing mm-hmm. her obviously as an like an Asian person being funny, like also like born in like North America, like it, she has that voice, but it's also, I don't know, just like so good. And she's around our age, like as I already mentioned around my age. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend it to each and every person, especially if you want to understand me. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia, what are your thoughts? Um, yes, I highly, highly recommend everyone should see it. I think for me personally watching that, it was inspiring and and motivating to just continue to find that voice. Like, I don't know if I've found my voice in comedy or we're always working towards that, but it was certainly um, an example of someone that just, that keeps trying. And I don't know a ton of her, um, her other works um, writing background, but like certainly we'll be diving in now. So that was a a tipping point so thank you for nominating that netflix special and julia oh absolutely i was the one, one of the ones i wanted to watch this originally um i did forget just how much she talks about poop in this and how <laughs> crass it can be so i will keep that in mind if i ever recommend it to someone but i think in terms True. of performance and writing it's one of the strongest mm-hmm. and it's always stuck out in my mind. So it's A plus plus for me in regards to comedy special. Excellent. And Sam. Me. Yes. Um, yes. I would rec- <laughs> I would I would wholeheartedly recommend it. Um, I think I mean for all the reasons we talked about, it's a pro- like accessible for a lot of different people. Um, I think a wide range of people will find it funny. I think for women, there are a lot of relatable things, but 
I was watching a bit of it last night and Dylan was laughing. Obviously you liked it, Matt. So, um, yeah, I thought like if I had to choose one, like I found the start wasn't like staying off funny for me. Like I kind of had to get into it a bit. And, Mm -hmm. um, so I would say like maybe stick with it a little bit. My only thing was, yeah, maybe like the first five, 10 minutes weren't laugh out loud for me. But overall, I thought it was great. Awesome. And Emily? Uh, yeah, I, I would 100% recommend it. I'm fairly certain Ali Wong will not send a bunch of evil people after you on Twitter <laughs> if you talk shit about her. And you, you shouldn't because she's very funny. <laughs> She'll also just come after you herself. It's fine. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Just knocking on your door. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'd be like, oh, it worked. My plan yeah. worked. I bamboozled <laughs> you, Allie. <laughs> Here's my spec script. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I win. <laughs> <Your show. laughs> oh my god, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thank you very much for being on the show. And is there anything that you guys want to plug or tell people about? Yes. Uh, Yes. When does this come out, Matt? This is going to be coming out. Uh, not. This is going to be coming out next month. Well, not, okay. Not so in April, um, June. Sorry, it'll be coming out in, in June. Okay. So as of now, we have already premiered our new music video, Spanx, and you can find it as long as it has not been taken down by the good people at the Spanx Corporation. <laughs> <laughs> by this time, but we could send you a secret link. Julia and I made a music video from a sketch we wrote in. There's a siren in the background. Uh, it, when we were in the writing program at Second City, and so we are we are announcing and launching that uh, on Friday, May eighth, which is way before this came out. So go watch it on our YouTube channel and subscribe to Big Chick Energy on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and our website, Big and Chick Energy website. Sketch. That is another place to find us. Excellent. Great. Yay. Oh, th- thanks again for being on the show. Thanks for having us. Yes. Wonderful house. Yes. You deserve a tech career you love, coworkers you can count on, innovation you're proud to build. If you're ready to change the world through technology, explore a career at Cox. Make a real impact in engineering, development, cybersecurity, and more, all while experiencing work-life balance, flexible work options, and great benefits. Visit cox.career slash tech to find a job you love today. That's cox.career slash tech. Grandma, can I have the chocolate chips? This secret recipe moment made possible by Emory Heart and Vascular Center. When Grandma needed heart care, she came to Emory. The difference? Emory Healthcare performs more heart procedures annually than anyone else in Georgia, which means better outcomes for our patients. And we offer advanced and personalized treatments developed by our top specialists that others don't. Like Grandma Knows, where you start your heart care matters. Smart cookie. EmoryHealthcare.org slash smart cookie.